I used to be a long time Android fan and a few years back I switched to the iPhone 12 and now I'm gonna go to the iPhone 15 and I want to talk a little bit about why I switched those years ago and maybe if you're considering going from Android to Apple I'm telling you why I switched my help this is the pixel 2 this is my last Android phone that I had uh, about almost three years ago. Normally I like to keep the other parts of EDC, but I thought it'd be important every now and then to jump into tech. And so I'm gonna talk about my iPhone for a little bit. I've been team Android since probably one of the Droid phones, if you're old enough to remember one of those. And I love the ability to customize anything I wanted about the Android phone. I had them for years, I had a Chromebook. I had a Pixel Watch, I think, for a while. Um, I know I had a Tick Watch, another smart watch. So just trying different stuff out in that ecosystem for a while. Had that for a bit. Went to the Pixel. Stopped doing a lot of the upgrading that I did and started running clean Android on the Pixel for a couple years. And then when it was time to upgrade, I decided to switch to iPhone. When I bought the 12, I thought that if I wanted to go back to Team Android when it was time to upgrade my phone, I'd make the decision then. But thinking about it a little bit, I'm gonna stick with Team Apple for a little bit. And I'm gonna give you probably five, maybe six reasons why I decided to switch to Apple and stay with Apple going forward. So first up is the apps. So if you compare the app stores, the Google store has almost double the amount of apps as the Apple store, but there's a lot of redundancy in there. And what I think that is, it has something to do with, you know, making it work for just the iPhone platform versus work, making it work for Google and Samsung. And back when I had a phone, HTC and Motorola and everybody else. So I think that's something to actually consider is that it's gonna be consistent from phone to phone and not like it would be with the Samsungs or Pixel or anything like that. I know there's been drama with the App Store over the years, but usually that's how Apple works, especially when they release a new phone. There's usually drama that's all over the news, all over the headlines, everybody's talking about it, and it peaks at a point and then it goes down and you never hear about it again after a few software updates. So that really isn't a factor for me. Probably one of the bigger reasons why I decided to switch is the Apple ecosystem. Nobody really is doing the ecosystem like Apple. Google is close, but I don't think they have that computer piece. The Chromebook is nice, and I still have a Chromebook. I still use my Chromebook probably a few times a week, but it's not that same level of computing that you'll get from an Apple product. Samsung, probably the same boat. Uh, their tablets are pretty good. The watch is pretty good. Their earbuds are pretty good. But again, the one piece they're missing is that computing. So if the, one of those can keep up with that, I think they'll start to close that gap on that ecosystem. But right now, the ecosystem between the, my Mac mini, my watch, my AirPods, my phone, they work pretty good. And the only thing I need to do for me to complete my ecosystem is to get an iPad. And I think I'm gonna probably get an iPad Pro here in the next few months. This was the deal breaker for me with Google when I had my Pixel 2. Nothing was wrong with my Pixel at the time, but it was at the end of its software updating cycle. So I wasn't gonna get that software update support anymore. I know that Google just recently announced that they're gonna support their Pixels um, seven or eight years or something like that. If they truly do that, that's amazing. Take a look at MKBHD's video about trusting Google to see if they'll actually come through on that promise. And look into some of the other Android manufacturers, their update cycle is anywhere from two to five years. Apple usually keeps theirs consistent with anywhere from six to eight years. If I were to just keep the 12, I'd probably have another three to four years of updating. So that's something for those folks that like to keep their phones for a long time. You don't have to worry if Google's gonna keep that promise or not. Apple is supporting their phones for a long time. And I'll put a link in the description of where I looked at how long they're supporting each of the phones. I'm really big on Google Docs, Google Sheets, all that stuff, Google Calendar. And one thing I did realize is that I can do all that Google stuff on an Apple device, but all of the things that make an Apple device unique and that int integration of the ecosystem, you can't do all that on Google. So I felt like I got all the advantages of running Google on the Pixel. I would keep those on my iPhone with very little drawback. I felt like it was a win-win for me. I will say that being the only one in the group without iMessage at the time, 
really worked on me. People used to give crack jokes and all that good stuff. The one thing though I really liked is the double tapping to give like a, a ha ha or an exclamation point or a thumbs up. Cause sometimes you don't really want to type a full message. You can do that now in Android, I believe. But at the time, again, this was two, almost three years ago, you couldn't do all that stuff yet. So that really made a difference for me. Cause a lot of times I don't need to say a whole sentence or anything like that. Double tap, give my response as a thumbs up. I agree. We're good to go, we can move on. And then one of the things is because you're only competing with the Apple devices and the different sizes, using accessories and companies making accessories for them, it's a lot easier to find. So when I was near the end of my life cycle on the Pixel, it was just about impossible to try to find good cases, fun cases for my phone. Now I don't have a problem, even now for my 12, I don't have a problem finding a case or anything like that. Accessories are easy to get. And as you go newer, it's even easier to do in the future. So accessories, that's a bonus, if you will. So I guess that was six reasons why I decided to go with the iPhone. So like I said before, and a shot of Google Trends proves it, iPhones overheating was the issue for this cycle. It seems to not be as popular as it is now. Now that some of that hype has died down, I feel like it's time for me to go ahead and get the phone. I think I'm gonna go with the Pro Max. And the couple things that really sealed the deal for me is I shoot most of my videos on my iPhone. So using USB-C would come in handy and running the SSD and some of the accessories would be great. The camera is nice and simple for somebody who likes to keep things simple. Let me know what you think. I'm still a fan of Android phones. So for all my Android fans out there, don't beat me up too bad in the comments. I still got love for Android phones. I'm just team Apple right now. Maybe I'll go back in the future. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you have. Do you have the 15? What do you think? What are some tips? I'd like to hear from you. Take it easy. MF and Research. I'm out.